Welcome back. So when we last left off, the first part of the layup for the first of the upper wing skins had been done. And so the peel ply and all that good stuff got taken off. And the inside layer of carbon fiber has now been laid down there and just needs to be wet down. So here you can see the guys have got that wet down. And they're in the process of um, putting down the peel ply and then it gets perf film again and the breather, uh, breather fabric. And then back under the bag again uh, to get uh, vacuumed down. So that's the first one of the uh, upper wing skins out of the way. And while that's been going on, the guys have been working on all these ribs for the uh, four plane and the elevator. So there's actually 24 in total. I thought there's 22. I actually missed a couple, um, but got them uh, yesterday, Friday. So 24 all together that they're uh, knocking through really quickly so they can get the molds done for those. And here's that upper wing skin now under the vacuum bag, so that one just needs to be set up and it'll be uh, ready to release. And then um, it can get trimmed. So that's the first of the upper wing skins. And on to the next one. And I promised you last time, or maybe it was the previous video to that, um, to show you again everything finished off with this nose hatch door. So there's the latches there and there's the metal plate there for the GPS mount. Uh, the GPS isn't in there right now, we'll, we'll install that later. And there's the strike plates for where those latches um, made up to when the door closes. So I can uh, actually close the door here and show you how that engages. And it doesn't take much effort and they click nicely into place so that's set up really well and it's locked in now. Can't uh, open that. So that uh, that's all sorted out and looking good. And now we're on to Thursday morning and uh, here's that wing skin uh, now with all the bag and everything released so that one is ready now to be trimmed so uh, yeah it came out nicely looks pretty nice with that um, that bi-actual it, it kind of looks like pin like a pinstripe suit actually if you look at the material very carefully it's kind of neat and a little bit more work going on on these various ribs they've already had the first round of uh, primer on there uh, most of them have anyway, so the guys are just doing the little repair jobs on there. And uh, meanwhile, uh, Jim has been working on installing all the plumbing for the uh, hydraulics for the gear retraction mechanism. So here he's working in the back of the aircraft there, hooking up the uh, lines to the cylinders for the main gear. And then this is a Thursday afternoon, so guys are laying on, uh, laying up the second of the wing skins now. Of the upper wing skin, so this is the first layer of, uh, or the you know the top layer of carbon going down that biactual, and um, then it'll get the the um, core put on there, and then it'll be bagged the same as the other one. And while Jeff, Keith, and Devon were wetting that down, uh, here we got Zach and Jeremy actually uh, wetting out the uh, the core there that's getting laid in place. So they're um, you know putting that um, resin sort of cabo mix into the core to make sure it gets uh, you know good sort of penetration in there same as what uh, was on the previous one in the last video and uh, here you see they've got the core in place now and they're in the process of putting down the peel ply and then next would be the um, perforated film and then the um, breather fabric and then the bag And back in the fuselage, uh, Jim has got the first couple of uh, hydraulic lines hooked up to that manifold there. That's the up and down line for the uh, left side uh, cylinder. And then up in the nose here, he's got the manifold in place with the two uh, solenoids. Those are the ones that uh, trigger the pump to come on and off. And uh, so he's moving along nicely with that. And this is Friday morning now and you see Jeff's taken the bag off of that uh, second skin and he's pulling um, the breather fabric clear there so then the red is the perforated film that'll be the next thing to be peeled back and um, along with that comes the peel ply and then they can uh, lay up the inside layer of the carbon fiber on that and um, also Jeff is now as you can see here putting the second round of primer I believe it's the second round on or maybe it's the first round on the second set of those uh, ribs for the elevator and for the four plane so uh, those are moving along nicely. Won't be long and the guys will start pulling molds from those. And back on the gear, uh, Jim's got the bulkhead fittings in there and he's also um, got the fittings on the manifolds there and the solenoids and he's got the main uh, electrical switch there um, or relay 
and then here's the other side of the bulkhead fittings from the inside those are ones that go to the dump valve and also for the uh, main brakes as well so here this is Friday afternoon now and uh, the guys are laying up the second uh, that well the inside layer on that second skin now and um, gonna get that one bag before the end of the day so that'll be the two um, main wing skins now completed or the two upper wing skins completed and uh, on next week they'll be laying uh, the lower ones and then after that will be time to do the spars so here they are just about ready to crack the um, vacuum tank there and bring it under vacuum and uh, you can watch it there as it draws down the bag and uh, gets that vacuum going it's kind of neat I like how that works uh, anyway so it's pretty exciting that they've managed to get um, two of the upper wing skins done uh, this week and so next week promises to have exactly the same thing done and so maybe the following week they'll be uh, laying up the one of the spars where it's a four plane one or one of the uh, wing spars I'm not sure yet um, but we're getting close to being able to having all the different parts to start um, assembling one of the wings or the four plane or something and by the end of the day on Friday Jim had these main lines running from the forward manifold all the way down to uh, the rear uh, manifold and he's getting ready to hook up the lines for the nose um, cylinder as well it's just getting that in place there uh, as you can see here yeah, so that's the nose retraction cylinder he's got the fittings on there and just starting to make up the lines that go to the manifold for that and this is what the ones look like in the rear now so there's the manifold with the lines coming from the front and then over to, to the left and right the cylinders so um, probably there's a good chance next week we may be able to actually cycle all that hydraulic stuff so that's kind of cool and uh, here the guys are getting the malamine board ready uh, so they can start laying out those um, ribs and then pull the molds off of those so that'll happen um, early next week and if you're wondering what I've been up to I got the engine all put back together or at least the prop and the drive put back together after having to create that new stake uh, washer so that's all sorted out now and as you can see it raining outside this is late Friday afternoon really wanted to run the engine but I had to wait for the rain to finish because uh, you know running the engine when it's heavy rain just pulls all the rainwater in the other doors especially in the big door we don't really want all that moisture in there but anyway it worked out and so here I got the engine running so now what it, the other thing I did and I didn't get to actually get any video was I've created a smaller spacer um, or actually had Jeremy cut it for me um, on the prop there that allows me now to have a little bit more adjustment in the prop so I've, I've changed the pitch now it was about 11 11 and a half degrees I've got it at about 18 degrees now um, so the actual pitch um, dimension goes from 33 inches to I believe 55 or 58 inches something like that so there's quite a lot more load on the engine now so I decided just to run it up not too hard this time because you know anytime I make a change I just want to be careful about um, you know pushing it too hard just to make sure everything's running smoothly give it a run and uh, just you know medium power settings and then I look at the the um, all the output from the ECU just to make sure nothing was weird and then the next time around I feel more confident about running it up so because this time here you know running it with quite a lot more load on the on the engine via the prop and uh, next time I'll try um, when I run it try getting um, some measurements again about the fuel used in this configuration but yeah it was moving a lot more air than it would normally do in the previous flat configuration as you'd expect but anyway I'll let you listen to this for a little bit
So this is what that run looked like and uh, as you can see here I didn't take it up much for higher than 2600 RPM as I said I just didn't want to push it too hard um, with the new configuration and also after that uh, repair of the stake nut I just want to make sure everything is running smoothly um, but as you can see there's more definitely more load on the engine uh, compared to the previous runs uh, which I'll show you here in a second um, and as you can see there um, I think we're up about 30 pounds of boost there um, which is you know 30 psi which is you know 20 um, 26 pounds of boost altogether at that rpm setting with that pop, uh, prop pitch i think that's pretty reasonable and uh, the fuel flow has increased over what we've seen uh, previously so um, again as expected um, but you know the engine was handling it fine it was definitely getting more heat uh, more quickly wouldn't be able to run it at that setting for very long um, without it getting too hot even with the um, the cooling going I'm probably going to switch up to a, a different uh, pump for the cooling so I can get a, a, a faster flow rate than 100 gallons an hour which I have for those uh, tanks sitting out the back and I'm switching over now this is a video I did um, of the previous run and this is um, with the flatter prop pitch so I've just got it marked here at the around about the same RPM 2600 RPM and as you can see there the boost levels are lower and uh, you know all the temperatures and all that sort of stuff is definitely lower and you know it's exactly what you'd expect when the prop is at a flatter pitch and the fuel flow again is not accurate as we know um, I do have those fuel uh, flow meters uh, or ordered or sensors ordered and they'll be able to hook into the ECU so there'll be one on the outlet and one on the return running back to the tank and you take the difference and you know the exact flow so we'll be able to get that into the ECU and again looking back this is what it looks like um, for that second run so anyway all good information there and lastly the other thing I've been working on too is uh, tweaking these door locks here there's still a little bit of work that needs to be done to get them to work all smoothly in the receivers but uh, everything's coming out nicely so I'm happy about that and uh, Mark is uh, back on the redrive now uh, so it won't be long we'll be able to send that off um, to have the parts for that uh, milled so anyway, that's our update for this week. Things are getting exciting. Um, tune in next week and uh, we'll see what we get up to. Thanks again for watching.